welcome all the people who have made it this long distant journey to come here once again and help us to celebrate the life and work of Mary Barnes, who I think is one of the most famous residents of the hall. I guess there are many spirits moving through this building this evening, obviously Mary herself. Um, also, um, Vera and Doris Lester, who founded the building. Uh, Gandhi, uh, who lived here with his goat, both those spirits there. And also the uh, spirit of, of, of Ronnie Lang, who, who we saw uh, playing the piano above us. Strangely, this place became the centre not just for a psychiatric experiment, but also for the counterculture. It was also the head office and organizing center of one of the key events of the 1960s, the Dialectic to Liberation Congress held at the Roundhouse in July 1967. Brown Mary was a world of sex, drugs, and rock and roll uh, linked to revolutionary politics and often accompanied by the soothing shapelessness of Eastern music. So I haven't got that much to do now, I can do this. I came over here to spend a couple of weeks with Wang, and I remember coming into the office uh, with Wang and Mary, and she was totally catatonic, rigid, frozen, and you're just talking to her, looking into her eyes for 20 minutes, and she relaxed and came alive again. I thought that was the most amazing thing, one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. And then he invited me back to come and join the community. At the time I was training as a psychiatric resident, I was a doctor at a New York teaching hospital. I, I was, I would say, uh, pretty cut off myself, but not so cut off that I didn't realize that there was something very odd about their way of treating people. And I didn't understand very much of what Ronnie Lang was saying, but I, something of what he was saying spoke to me as, uh, this, is, this is what I've got to find out more about. And we came here like a whirlwind. We were full of New York energies. And everybody here hated us. Immediately, <laughs> we, we kind of completely changed the community. My first memories of Mary Barnes go back to when I was seven years old. Um, my father said that he had started a place with some colleagues and the idea was that there'd be no rules except th those which were made up by the people living there. Um, there was a very extraordinary lady who he wanted me to meet and he took uh, myself and my brother who was eight to Kingsley Hall. And I still feel the the nervousness and the, the, the anticipation of what I was going to go through because he took me down to the basement and being seven years old, the first thing that came into my mind was where is this smell of shit coming from? And we went into this room and to a seven-year-old, it was hell. <laughs> there was very little light and I couldn't see anybody. There was somebody under a blanket and my father sat me down and what was going through my mind I, I, I just can't even recollect but he communicated with this person I presumed it was a person under the under the blanket as if this individual was sitting next to us talking and it was a, it was an ability that uh, that my father had which uh, I think was separated him out from others that if you can imagine a seven-year-old boy and his father sitting in a room with the walls covered in shit and he is pretending, as far as I'm concerned, everything is perfectly normal <laughs> and sitting with this woman having a conversation. We were in the, um, in the dining room in this building and you could smell the shit permeating through the wall from her room and there was a serious discussion going on that evening. Adrian said there were no rules at Kingsley Hall. And there, uh, there was a discussion going on then about whether someone's smell space 
should be larger than the space in their room. <laughs> and um, I remember Joe jabbing me in the ribs because I, I was visiting then for a week from an American hospital where I was training to be a psychiatrist. And Joe said, you don't get this kind of discussion, I'll bet, in your uh, <laughs> clinical uh, rounds at, uh, at the hospital. Mary had an immediate crisis. What was the crisis? She wouldn't eat. She came here to regress and to be a fetus again. She wanted to be tube fed. And she was getting skeletal. So there was whole discussions, could we allow this, should we allow this? Shouldn't she go to hospital? There was the pro-hospital and anti-hospital factions here. And then, and then she said, had a temper tantrum. Ah, no, 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 I want a tube. And I said, no, it's too dangerous. We think you should have a tube, if that's what you want. But we can't do it here. You have to go to hospital if that's what you want. What we can do here is give you a baby bottle. And after much anger and rage, and she, um, she agreed. And I volunteered to give her the baby bottle, which is what I did. And this 45-year-old former nurse, I was holding with a baby bottle. Mary's journey involved becoming as a little child, indeed as a baby. It involved movements of re-turnings from adult sister tutor at a teaching hospital to a sometimes contented, sometimes angry, jealous, and or envious baby. From death in life to a life she could begin to live fully. She was moved by a faith that it might be possible to find an uncorrupted core or seed that was good enough and that with good enough care and letting be could grow. Later on, as I got to know her more, and I was able to improvise with her. I, I don't remember who started crocodiles and snakes first, but uh, eventually, the way I got through to her was I would bite her, and she would bite me, and eventually she would come alive again. Because the whole thing was with her, coping with her it. Her it was her anger and her rage, which is going to destroy the world. And when she found she couldn't destroy me, then she began to think, well, oh, maybe it isn't so powerful, you know? <laughs> you felt possessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That made you feel angry. No, I'm not angry with you, Joe. Yeah, yeah, Mary, you were angry. No, no, not angry. Not angry with you. Mary, you, you look angry right now. No. But broken, confused, Joe. No, 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 no. Don't, no. Hit, me, don't, no. No, don't, don't hit me like no. that. Don't hit me like that. Go on, go on, go on. You can hit me like that. Go on. She grabs him around the middle. What's this now, eh? It's a snake! Snake, eh? Squeezing me! Snake. Ah, squeezing me. Is that all you can squeeze? Snakey? Come on, come on, squeeze more. Mary squeezes as tight as she can, then finally she lets go, falls back panting, exhausted, happy. Joe, breathless as well, then he turns to Mary. Mary, Mary, you... You bit me. You bit my ear. You hit me, yeah? And I'm still here. And I hit you, and you're afraid. Anger doesn't hurt me, and it doesn't kill you either. We're both okay. <laughs> 